Hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop. Well, you guys may be wondering, hey, why did I just watch this dude give himself a hernia? Well, you see this box here? Huh? Huh? I don't think the uh, picture there does it justice. This is the Evolution S355 MCS metal cutting miter saw. That's right, you heard that correctly. This is a miter saw specifically made for cutting metal. Man, what a world we're living in. So if you guys are familiar with traditional miter saws, you know, cutting two by fours or any kind of lumber or siding or whatever, you know, the chop part comes down, it slides, the table turns and everything to cut miters. This is that exact same thing, but specifically made for cutting metal. And right out of the gate here, before we even get into this thing, I'm gonna come totally 100% clean. Evolution reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing this saw for you guys. To which I replied, <laughs> are you crazy? Yeah. So let's rip into this thing and see what this saw has to offer. Honey, hush, would you look at this thing? I mean, there are saws. And then there are saws. Man, does this... Mm, mm. Let's just take a little closer look at this thing, shall we? I tell you is what, if you ever found yourself in a situation where you need to chop down some steel, found your huckleberry. This here Evolution S355 has a 14 inch blade, 15 amp motor spinning at 1450 RPM will cut through solid half inch steel. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> now let's see if we can't dive in and take a look at some of the more delicate features of this beast. Check this out here Slick, you see your material clamp? Uh, it goes on this nice bar here that actually moves up and down on a set of detents. Then you can retain it where you want. The material clamp itself has this little move out of the way locking jaw. So you can clamp down once you get to your material, but you don't got to screw the handle all day. It free floats. See this nifty little device here? It goes on the end of the clamp. Yeah, that's a V block. So if you need to put a piece of pipe or angle or square tubing or whatever kind of weird configuration you need to make this thing work, they've thought of that and they have all the attachments to do that cut safely. And not only do we have this awesome clamp bar here on the front, we have the third hand. You know, if you guys have used a regular miter saw, you guys are familiar with these things. But this thing is an absolute beast. And it has a lock on the front also, just like the front. So you don't have to screw this thing all day long. You just push the button until it hits your material and then you clamp down to what you need. And there are five positions on the back of the fence here where you can take this post out and move it to wherever you need this to be. And the miter table herself. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, is this thing smooth. And it has all the detent locks. 15 degree, 30 degree, 45, both directions. 
And of course, it locks back at zero. And you crank this down to make everything nice and sturdy. But this thing is smooth as glass. Now you guys may be asking yourself, hey Dan, that thing looks heavy. Want to get a little tippy whenever you start pulling down on the blade or let it back up? Will it fall over backwards? Well, the team over at Evolution thought of that. And on the back of the miter slides here, there is this sturdy little jack stand thing that goes underneath. So whenever this thing is moving, you don't have to worry about the whole saw flipping over on you. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention? It's a sliding miter saw. Now this thing is not a compound miter saw. And if you guys don't know what that is, that means that the blade tilts this way in combination with the table tilting this way. So this only goes down and in and out. But I mean, honestly, if we're talking about shortcomings, really, eh, that is like the least of your concern. Whenever you're dealing with something like this, like a 14 inch blade spinning per near 1500 RPM, ripping through solid chunks of steel. Man, it's mm, mm. So I guess all there's left to do is uh, throw some iron in this thing and see what she's got. Well, fellas, here we are back in the shop. Uh, we got this thing kind of set up, but I actually found a couple extra cool little features throughout moving this thing and just playing with it. So let's check that out before we actually start hacking. So like I'm sure you're familiar with most miter saws, there is a lock here that keeps the saw in the closed position. So you can use this handle here to pick everything up and carry it with you real nice. And like I mentioned before, this thing is a sliding miter saw. So the entire blade moves a total of three inches. But if you take note to these little holes here, those index with this locking pin. It has this retainer here. If you pull this retainer out, this slide will lock in two different positions. So it changes where your blade comes in contact with the material on the other side of the fence. If you want, you can pull this pin out, lock it out so this thing floats wherever you want and then simply tighten down your position with this handle here. So now that we got those couple more little details out of the way, let's throw some stock in here and see what she's got. All right, so we're gonna start off real nice and super simple here. I simply have a piece of inch and 5 eighths Unistrut channel. This stuff isn't very heavy. It's about a 16th or so thick, but I figure this is a good starting place as any. So. We'll just find a good place here in the middle where it's nice and solid. Put our clamps up against the material. Run them down so everything's good and secured. Everybody's happy. Let's fire this thing up, huh? Howdy, is that nice? You can see that cut there? You really couldn't ask for anything cleaner than that. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of deburring that needs done, but you saw how quick, easy, and effortless that was. Now let's step this up to a little bit bigger game here. I have a piece of square stock or rectangle, however you want to look at it, just a piece of steel here, one inch wide by half an inch thick. According to the book, this thing will handle half inch thick steel in one go. So let's clamp this thing up and give it a shot. Now, just for safety's sake, let's throw some ears on here because uh, this dog barks. Contact. <laughs> It's like it wasn't even there. Man, this thing has guts for days. Would you look at that? Man, that is nice. This is borderline like you did it in a milling machine. Holy cow. I tell you what, since that worked so well, let's go ahead and just throw this thing on a miter and see how well that lines up. We'll cut 245s out of this piece of square stock here, put them together and square it up with a square and see how accurate this thing actually cuts. So I'm going to take my table here, loosen up the clamp, release this detent one with my thumb, move her on over, 
to 45 degrees, and you can tell here by the needle, it tells me that we're at 45 degrees. Tighten the clamp back up and get our material back in there. Make sure the table's nice and clean so we don't have any debris getting in the way of the cut. Put our stock in there. Clamp it down and get ready to send it. <laughs> Boy, howdy, I tell you what, does this dog eat? Holy cow. Would you look at that? I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of deburring that could use to be done here, but man, that is so clean, it's ridiculous. Let's uh, check this against the square and see how it actually comes out. So we got our stock here with the 45 cut on it and the chunk that came out. Let's throw this in a square here and see how it looks. Oh my goodness. We can look at that. I tell you what, that isn't perfect, but it is just about perfect. I don't know what much more you could ask for for a raw first cut off a saw. If you were trying to do this with an angle grinder or like a band saw, it would never work. Let's try to put these together here and see what our 90 looks like. Get everything squared up best we can. And look at that. Look how perfect that joint is at 90 degrees. Rough cut right off the saw. A little bit of beveling here and this thing is ready to weld. So now, like I mentioned before, these clamps are configured with these little adapters for different kinds of round objects and angle iron. So I got a small chunk here, one by one angle iron. We're gonna put this up against the fence and utilize these clamp add-on, adjuster, whatever you wanna call them. Use that to clamp this thing against the fence securely and we'll see how this cuts. These clamp adapters here are super handy. You see how they're in the shape of a V. This is to cradle a radius or to accept the V of a piece of angle iron. But the cool part is, you see how they're offset like this? So the ball detents on the end of the clamp here hold this in place, and whether the height of your object allows or not, you can flip this to go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Obviously, this whole thing moves up and down like we talked about earlier, but this gives you that little bit of adjustment without having to mess with all that. It's just really handy. Let's go ahead and get this guy set up in the jig here. Get this all clamped down good to go, and we'll go ahead and zip that. Man, this thing is like cutting through butter. It is unreal how user-friendly and awesome this thing is. Would you guys just check out the squareness of this cut right here? It is unreal how perfect that thing is right out of the box. I mean, you could really not ask for more. So while we're at it and we have everything set up in the configuration we need it anyway, I got here a piece of one inch round bar. Let's just, uh, Throw that in here and see how it handles that. So this will pretty much be the exact same setup procedure as before. We're gonna utilize the V's and the clamps here to hold our material securely, lock down our clamps, get everything ready to cut. Man, this thing is so nice. Imagine if you were trying to do that with a four and a half inch grinder, how long that would take to get you. And it would be nowhere near that clean of a cut. So guys, in conclusion, what do I think? 
I think it's amazing that I've made it this far in life without actually having one of these. This is one of those deals that you never know what you were missing until you had it. This is absolutely amazing. I'm sure that you guys are like me, and in the past, you know, you've tried doing stuff like this with hacksaws, sawzaws, band saws. Heck, there's even these old wafer wheel type chop saws. And if you guys have ever used one of these things, these are more like spark generators instead of a real chop saw. Yeah, it'll work, but you're standing on this thing. It's just shooting lava out the back end, making a whole mess of your shop. Don't get me wrong, this thing isn't exactly the cleanest in the world either. But what you get as a finished product out of this, it's perfect right out of the saw. Your cuts are square. They are clean. They need minimal post product work to have that joint ready to go for welding. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't the cheapest saw in the world, but if you're looking at investing in something like this, it's because you care about this kind of work. If you guys do different kinds of fabrication and metal work and anything, you know that your time is your money. Your time is your customer's money. And the way that you transfer savings is by having better tools like this. The less time you spend fixing and repairing joints after the cut, the less time you have to spend on the whole project. It just makes sense. If you want a better, higher quality end product, the way you start that process means everything. So if you're interested in picking up this saw, check out the link in the description below and just check out Evolution's website. They have amazing power tools for any and all applications. It's unreal the stuff they get into and obviously they make good quality tools. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this as much as I did and I know I'm going to for years on and we will see you guys later.